Good afternoon. This is Derek Brex, and I'm here to give you some weekly Wednesday, uh, some weekly wisdom. Okay. Um, today, you know what? Before we even get into this, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to enter into your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the guidance that you've given us. We thank you for the understanding by way of the Holy Spirit that we may understand your spiritual laws and that we may apply them in our lives. God, we thank you for the command to be separated from the world. And God, as always, we bind anything that is not of you. I, I ask that you will speak in me and through me to your people. I pray that you will open their eyes that they may see, open their ears that they may hear. And God, most importantly, I pray that there are no repercussions for the truth going forward. All of these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, today, we're talking about Halloween. Now, I want to say this. Being from, being from New Orleans, uh, I understand the love affair with, 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 the love affair of people with the things of darkness, such as uh, voodoo, witchcraft, witches, uh, poem readers, um, the cemetery stories, hauntings, and things like that. And 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 I also understand that you know a lot of times the, these things are, are, are viewed as untrue. Uh, that forms of entertainment. You know, after all, horror is one of the 15 genres of, of movies. And, and you know, there are people that, that will say, um, well, these things, yeah, I, I believe it's true, but it's only true uh, if you believe in it. So I don't believe in it. Therefore, it has no effect on, on me. But what if I told you that, that Halloween uh, is a part of a huge attempt to deceive you. Would you believe it? So what I'm going to do today is I want to give you the history because a lot of times people don't know uh, where things came from. So what I want to do is I want to educate you on this holiday, this, this, this kid's holiday, um, this alter ego holiday. Let, let me let me say this. Um, this teaching is for the people of God. This teaching is only for the people of God. Okay? If you are not a believer, hey, do whatever you want to do. Okay? Please understand that. I'm not trying to bang anybody that is not a believer over their head with this. I'm just giving the truth. Uh, now it, it can be educational, it's informative, you know, but my targeted audience is the church. So I will give you the history, the, the origin of Halloween, its purpose. Um, we'll talk about the, the evolution of it. We'll talk about the role of the church. 
Uh, we'll talk about how candy became a part of the, the celebration. Uh, we'll cover uh, how the pumpkins entered um, the, the celebrate, uh, celebration. Uh, and we'll end with, uh, we'll end with, with trick-or-treating. Okay. So again, <laughs> the, the title for today is the cost of candy, a biblical warning against Halloween, the cost of candy, a biblical warning against Halloween. And you see, we're going to cover Samhain, uh, Lemuria and All Saints Day. So first off, um, the Halloween that we celebrate today, uh, traces its its origin uh, to a festival called Samhain, celebrated on October 31st um, among the Celtic people, and this is was this was in the region of like Scotland and Ireland and, and, and other parts of Europe. Now on this day, they prayed to the Druids, which was their priests. Okay, they prayed to their priests for a bountiful harvest okay now i think it's important for you to understand that this was uh during a, a time when the, it was still a agricultural based society during this time it was all about the crops okay and Samhain marked the end of the warm season and the beginning of their the, basically their their new year okay uh and it was also a time to honor their deceased with a feast for their dead okay now for the celts um Samhain was the the most significant day of the year and they believe that during this time pay attention they believe that during this time that the veil to the afterlife was thin. You got to understand this is this is man making sense of this. The veil to the afterlife was very thin, and it was believed that the souls of the people that had died in the previous year could return to visit because of the veil between uh, reality and the afterlife was so thin they could come back and visit. Okay, now pay attention. Failure to participate was believed to uh, result in punishment from the gods. And that punishment was in the form of illness or death. Now let's move on. Because in Rome, as time goes by, we get to Rome when Rome was this, this great civilization there was a celebration that was known as Lemuria. And Lemuria was a time in which their dead was honored as well, and, and their spirits were remembered and appeased. Okay, And this festival of Lemuria also included uh, reverence to uh, Pomona, which was the goddess of agriculture. So, see, it's still the same thing. Samhain was agriculture and dead. Lemuria is going to be dead and honor uh, the agricultural goddess as well. Now, it's important to note that Rome significantly impacted or influenced, uh, influenced and impacted, well, with their belief, but they influenced the early church. You gotta really remember going back to to uh, Constantine. Constantine was the one that ended the persecution of the the Christians and declared Christianity the state religion. So now I want you to pay attention to the mindset of the church because at the time when 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 Constantine did this, it became all about growing. Christianity. It became all about growing Christianity. Okay, they wanted to make it big. They wanted the numbers. Okay, so watch the mindset of the, of the church. In in an effort to promote Christianity, the church sought to adapt and accept, embrace Lemuria. Okay, now remember, Lemuria was they, they honored the dead, right? 
But instead of honoring all the dead as the Romans did, the church decided that they would celebrate the, 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 the deaths of the martyrs. Okay, And a martyr is simply a person who is killed because of their religious or uh, uh, religious beliefs. Okay, so they wanted to, to honor the the people that had died in the name of Christianity. Okay, so in 609 AD, the celebration known as All Saints Day was held. Now, pay attention to this, because in 609, when it was held, it was held on May 13th. Okay. Let's understand that. Remember, they wanted to they wanted to grow Christianity. They wanted to uh, uh, embrace uh, Lemuria. Okay, but they 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 came up with the, the the honoring of the dead of the dead saints. Okay, but the first time is is held in in May on May thirteenth. Okay, now you got to remember that Lemuria was still being celebrated. Since Lemuria was still being celebrated, okay, May 13th, you know, that's that's a long ways away. So, in the 9th century, Pope Gregory moved All Saints Day to November 1st. And he moved it there to counteract the influence of Samhain, and it became known as All Hallows Eve. Okay? It became known as All Hallows Eve, and it was for the souls of the saints, right? And All Hallows Eve, so if it's on the eve of something, that means the day behind it is the actual day, right? So All Hallows Eve was for All Souls Day, okay? And All Souls Day was a um, on November 2nd, all right? So by by the time you get to uh, eight thirty seven A.D., Pope Gregory the Fourth uh, has recognized this as a three day event, a three day celebration of the dead. Okay, so now the church has implemented, has embraced uh, Lemuria. And they've tried to Christianize it by adding, still talking about the dead, uh, still celebrating the dead, but they, they've decided to Christianize it by making the dead of the dead Christians be the target of the celebration. Okay? So, I want to I wanna share this with you. Here are some of the traditions that took place during this time, okay? One notable uh, practice was called souling, S-O-U-L-I-N-G, okay? It's connected to the soul cakes, okay? The soul cakes were the the, 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 the little sweet, the little round uh, pastries that they would make, okay? But just hold on to that. But it was called souling, okay? And so people would go door to door, begging for foods and cakes in exchange for prayers, okay? In exchange for prayers of the souls that were deceased, okay? Souling. Now, also during this time, the wealthy individuals would wear masks to protect themselves from evil spirits. They're wearing a mask to protect them from evil spirit. Now, I think you, you got to understand that a spirit is not a physical thing so a mask wouldn't really but don't worry about that anyway so the wealthy individuals will wear masks to protect them from the evil spirits um okay so then we get to the these cakes the the soul cakes okay and they they would pour like the uh the, the cakes and the the they would put the cakes and they would pour milk on the graves to ward off these evil spirits when they visited the, the graves of them, right? And this is how the graveyard becomes an integral part of the holiday. Okay? I want you to pay attention to all of this that's being added. Okay? Now, because these these soul cakes, which were 
uh, sweet pastries is going to evolve is, is going to evolve into candy. Okay, now because they think that uh, they believe that sweets had a way of uh, fighting uh, evil spirits. In the 16th century, you have the witch panic that's going to uh, emerge, and it's going to become intertwined with this celebration as well. You know, uh, there was time when, um, you know, witches became popular, and as, you know, uh, you had the, the, in America, you had the, the Salem witch trials when they believed people to be witches and they would burn them at the stake and stuff like that. So when you deal with the witches, uh, this was women, and the common kitchen tools of the woman uh, would have been like the broom, the the cauldron, and um and 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 them having the cat and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So that made it more like sinister. Okay, so it created that sinister atmosphere. Okay, now after the Civil War, um, ghost stories were introduced, and this is where when we get the 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 idea or the story of the the boogeyman is created and introduced okay now i hope you're following this now how did the pumpkin the jack-o-lantern become a symbol of halloween well that's a good question well according to legend jack there was a man named jack um who was so evil that he was kicked out of hell and, and a lot of times this stuff don't make sense you know what I'm saying? When you think about it, it's like, that's crazy. But this is the history. So Jack was so evil that he was kicked out of hell and he used a hollowed out turnip with a with a with a, a, a piece of coal in it that was the light for this hollowed turnip so that he can see his way while he was uh, leaving, right? And this is going to grow into but they begin to use pumpkins and they would carve out the pumpkin and put a light in it so initially jack had the turnip carved out with a piece of coal in it for the light it evolved into a pumpkin carved out with a candle in it okay now this also is connected to when you deal with 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 jack the souls that are trapped in purgatory Okay, because remember the Catholic Church believes in purgatory. When you die, um, your soul goes to purgatory, and then uh, your loved ones can pray you into heaven. Okay, I need you to pay attention to this because a lot of times people are celebrating these things and don't understand why, how it came to be, uh, and it's and this is a modern day thing that it still believes. Okay, now as far as the tricks, children begin playing mischievous pranks on, on, on Halloween night, right? And in response, the homeowners uh, started giving treats to avoid being tricked. And this is going to eventually evolve into the practice of giving the candies, right? And thousands of years later, here we are. Trick or treat. Now it's not about the, you know, the, the pranks and stuff like that, but, you know what I'm saying, they're, they're giving candy, okay? So to so some... You know, all of this information is unknown. It can be, it's unknown, it can be forgotten, ignored, and or overlooked in order that children may celebrate Halloween. Mm hmm You see that? And it's, it becomes like, this is just a trick of the enemy. This is just a trick of the enemy. So in case you did not know any of this, Allow me to explain why everything that I've mentioned, celebrating the dead, um, the souling, um, the sweets, the cemetery, um, the their interaction between the, the, the those that had died in the previous year. Allow me to explain why all of this is forbidden. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. See, here's the thing about the, 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 the church folk. See, church folk always has an opinion when it comes down to something that they want to celebrate. But God didn't ask for your opinion. He gives the standard. So these people will say, well, ain't nothing wrong with celebrating Halloween. 
It's just about giving candy to the kids. And then you have the church that say that, okay, they believe that. You know why they believe that? Because let's change it from trick-or-treating, because the world trick-or-treats, and we're going to call it trunk-or-treat. Well, let me, I guess maybe you should understand that changing the words doesn't change what's going on. Because remember, it is a trick of the enemy. Okay, now watch this. Let's get biblical. Now, all of these things are forbidden. Verse 19 and 20 says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living of the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 says, There shall not be found among you anyone that make it his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Now, hold on. Let's pause for a second. Divination is witchcraft. An observer of time is a soothsayer, an enchanter, a sorcerer, a fortune teller. An enchanter practices divination. It's like it's a person that, that observes signs. And they are a part of fortune telling. You understand this? Verse 11 says, Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Now, a charmer is a person that, 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 fellowships with the other side, right? Who tries to join, you know, join people. A familiar spirit is one who evokes the dead. And the necromancer uh, seeks the heathen deity in prayer and worship. So it's, it's nothing more than a, wi a wizard or a, a, a magician, okay? Then verse 12 says, for all that do these things are an what? An abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God do it drive them out from before thee. Now, what is he talking about? Because in Israel, when Israel went to um to inherit their promised land, these are the things that the people that were in the land did. They was involved in all of this because all of this is demonic. Okay? All of this is demonic. Leviticus 19 and 31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So see, when you participate with it, you are defiled by them. And those, um, again, those with the familiar spirits are one who invokes the dead. We're talking about wizard. Has a familiar spirit. And Leviticus 20 and 6 says, and the soul that turn it after such as have familiar spirits and go after wizards and after wizards to go whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and I will cut him off from among his people. You see that? See that? Because here's what we have to understand. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22, it says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. So just the appearance of it is what you have to stay away from. So you know getting involved in it. Now, um, as I was saying, the people in the promised land, they, they practice these things, right? And, and um, you have to realize that 
when you read the scripture we just read, it didn't say that um, it didn't say that he hated only the practices. He said that he hated the practice and those that participated in it. Okay, you, you see what I'm saying? So this is important, right? He called it an abomination. In Deuteron Deuteronomy 12, it mentions that uh, Israel was to destroy their altars, burn down their groves, uh, destroy their graven images, all of these things that were connected to their gods, all of these things that were demonic, okay? And this would include the properties, the practices, and the practicing of it, okay? Also, in, in, in Hebrews 9 and 27, it says, and it is appointed men once to die. But after this is a judgment. So that means that reincarnation is out the door too. Okay? So, because we got to realize that death is a punishment of sin. The only reason why we die is because of sin. So, God is clear that we are not to communicate, celebrate, be curious about the dead, about evil, about witchcraft, uh, about palm readers, voodoo, magic, witches, and all wizards. Okay? Now, now listen carefully to me. The enemy cannot tell you the truth. He has to deceive you. So what he will do is he will trick you into believing it's just. He will trick you into minimizing what's really going on behind the scene because this is a spiritual thing. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is a spiritual thing that is happening. The thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is what's going on. It's all an attempt to destroy you. But he will trick you into believing that. He presents it in a way that you begin to say, it's just, it's just a little candy for the kids. It's just a, a costume. It's just for play. It's just a movie. And what I've noticed is that the devil has a way of repackaging his tricks um, to evolve. So when you look at the evolution of Halloween from what's what was going on uh, with the Celts, with you know with the Celts, um, by the time you get to us today, it's still a lot of the same practices happening. It's just been updated. Because he has to make it more modern. And the thing about children, once children become a part of something, you ensure that the future continues. You see? Because those children grow up, it becomes nostalgic, and then they give it to their children. You see? So this is, this is bigger than just uh, candy. But here's the thing. The enemy needs you to form a covenant with him. He needs you to forge a covenant. And this is going to be, this is, this may sound crazy to people, but let me know, let me let you know what's going on spiritually. There is something which is called a legal right. When you establish that covenant, you give Satan a legal right. Now, watch this. Your dreams. You can have a dream that, oh, my grandmother visited me. My grandparents visited me. Oh, my parents. My parents visited me. Whoever the loved one may be, child, whoever, it's not them in a the dream. It's a familiar spirit. And what happens is when you see, because a lot of times we want to know that grandmother is okay. So when you embrace grandmother in a dream, you talk to grandmother in a dream. Remember, it's not grandmother. It's a trick. It's a familiar spirit. This is how the covenant is forged. Now, okay, but what are the results? What are the consequences of this, this covenant? Once you give Satan a legal right, he has a legal right to that, not only you, but your bloodline. So that means the generations that come after you, he has a legal right to them. So what happens is, since he has a legal right, because you willingly participated in it, even though you're being deceived, you willingly embrace that loved one. And see, that's why the Bible tells us so many times not to be deceived, not to be deceived. And the only way that you cannot be deceived, the only way that you know the tricks of the devil is by reading the scripture. So I say, put on the whole arm of God so that you'll be able to stand. 
you'll be able to ward off the, 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 the fiery the, the thoughts of the enemy. Because he's coming to deceive you. He's not going to come and tell you the truth. He can't tell you the truth. He's the father of lies. The truth is not in him. So even if he tells you something that, that would appear to be true, he's lying. Because he's trying to get you, he's trying to manipulate you to do something. Because it's all an attempt to destroy you. You see that? So here we are, so many thousands of years later, celebrating something, dressing our kids up in the name of, oh, it's just a, it's just a day. And, and to show you the, the other spirit of it, um, spirit that, 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 that happens, this is an alter ego day. So you have a lot of people that dress up as their alter ego on this day. There's a lot of witches and stuff on this day. You really go after the, 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 the demonic aspect of it willingly. So you forget, you don't know everything that's going on behind the scene. You don't care about everything that's going on behind the scene. It's just about candy for the kids. Now it's bigger than that because you have adults that 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 love uh, Halloween more than kids. And here's the thing. Somebody will say, well, I wouldn't take that from the kids. Well, let me, let me explain this to you. We give our kids what we believe. Your child is not going to die because you don't celebrate Halloween. It's not going to happen. It's not going to kill them. It's you putting that thought into them that, oh, you really want to celebrate Halloween like everybody else. And here's the thing. When the church, just like the church did 2,000 years ago, almost 2,000 years ago, just as the church did then, this is what the church is still doing now. The church said, oh, we're we going we gonna to celebrate this demonic holiday. But we're going to take, we're going to remove the demonicness from it. Uh, we just going to give out the candy. Uh, we're going we gonna to call it trunk or treat. So even at trunk or treat, the kids have on costumes. They're still getting the candy. All of these practices that were for the dead, that were involving the dead. You see? When it is clear that God never told you to celebrate the dead, he forbid it. When they're dead, it's over. When a person dies, you can't pray them into, there's no repentance from the grave. And you definitely, repentance is personal. So you definitely can't repent for a loved one. So praying them, forget it. It doesn't work like that. But you need to understand what's going on. But, and, and here's the thing, there is no celebrating without participation. There's no celebrating without participating. There's no celebration without participation. So you can't say that it just ha so happens to be the same night that, that this evil event is going on. We just so happens to be doing the same thing that they're doing. But yeah, it's just we've, we've reduced it to being about the kids and this is how people are deceived. But at the end of the day, watch this. The choice is yours. This information that I'm giving you, like I said, this is not to this is not to um, those that are outside the body. No, nah, this is to the church. What I'm telling is to the sons of God, to the church, to the Christians. That's who I'm talking to. But at the end of the day, the choice is yours. But what I will say is, do not let candy cost you your soul. Because here's the thing, once you are participating in these things, remember that that legal right that has been established, that access that has been granted to the generations after you, in order for you to get out of that, you have to be able to renounce and denounce that. This is something that the, the, the church doesn't really teach. They don't really touch on this. A lot of things that we are involved in before Christ, when you come to Christ, yeah, you have a new beginning, a new start. But there are a lot of things that you need and you repent, right? There are a lot of things that you need to go back and renounce and denounce. Because you gave your life to Christ, that doesn't mean that that legal right is destroyed. And Satan has time. That's why we're looking at this evolution and seeing how it changed, how the church got involved. So, and, and here's the amazing thing. 
it had nothing to do with the church. The church willingly said that, hey, I see what you're doing. You know what? Maybe how can we capitalize? You know what? I know. They're dead people. Dead people's dead people. So there have been people that have 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 gotten have lost their life in the name of Christianity. You know what? What better way to honor them? At first you're saying that no, we're gonna we're gonna celebrate Lemuria. This is what the church is saying. We're gonna celebrate Lemuria. Then now you got a guilty conscience. But we're gonna have to Christianize it some kind of way. And and unfortunately, there's a lot of people who live their life like that today. You're connected to the things that's going outside. And you try to find a way to make it palatable. A 